मुझसे है ये Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome back, my dear, my dear viewers. Alhamdulillah, in our guest uh, studio today, we have our guest speaker, Sheikh Ahmed Dabbagh. Uh, and we were, they've just returned back from their trip to America, from America. So we'll be going back to them uh, regarding the trip and the tour that they have just covered and been to. And we were just uh, discussing about their tour. And uh, they, they, all, they mentioned, such as like the people who migrated from Europe to America. And maybe we can ask them further questions like, uh, the people that we see often in the media, we hear about the people in America. You know, what is the real state of those people, uh, the Muslims especially, and the Muslims there? I uh, would like to ask them that what how, and how are the Muslims coping with the current situation uh, in America and what their state is? So, inshallah, we will go back to them and we will continue with these questions. Salaam alaikum. Um, Mashallah, you co uh, mentioned a few things uh, at the beginning uh, about the Muslims uh, in America. But um, one thing you touched upon is the state of the Muslims uh, in, the, in uh, America. How are they currently coping? Um, and the Muslims there, are they, are they uh, what we see like on the TV, they're betrayed as the, uh, the non-Muslims are being nasty or horrible, is that the state, real uh, state of the Muslims there, or uh, the non-Muslims, or? Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Although we now are speaking on media uh, itself, but uh, Islamically, any news uh, or any propaganda thing which is given on the news, it is not reliable. It doesn't fit the criteria of Islamic validation. So anything which we hear on news and documentaries, uh, one should not make one's mind up based upon that because they are made in a, with a particular mind. Firstly, a person has a thought, he has a mind, he has an idea, then he portrays that thought. Similarly, a TV channel, such even news channels, they have their own inclinations, they have their own mindset, and that mindset you can find in their news even at the, at the version of news, documentaries, discussions they give. And then there are religious channels, obviously. You can take the example of religious channels. They are going to present their own view. They are not going to actually, for example, uh, entertain others. Similarly, there are political views, political interest, geographical interest. So one cannot rely upon the media for making a final judgment. Uh, about people and things. Sometimes the things are quite the opposite how they are actually portrayed. So you can in a way be programmed to believe something which is not and you can be uh, other side as well. Uh, so the view uh, which uh, as you have mentioned which people get from the TV that uh, the, about the uh, materialistic and military side and the government side, that is the view which the people outside we get from the news, what they are doing, or actually the, uh, the offensive and preventive measures and uh, uh, killing people, meaning through the army and uh, occupying and things, etc., etc. But the, as you have mentioned, the public uh, is uh, quite different actually. They, it's like any public of any nation, what the governments do, they might not actually approve or not be in favor, but the, uh, they do. But this is such a big country, so, and people there are certain people, for example, there are 52 states, and there are certain people who have not even left their state in their whole life, let aside visiting other worlds. So they have a very, very naive idea, many of them, about the other world outside, the Asia, the Europe, and about what their government is doing uh, as well. So these people are generally very open, uh, listening, and they also get affected. Similarly, 
we living in the here and we have not been there or experienced the um, mixing with people, we can have a partial view of the, them, meaning looking at the government and making the public also thinks like that. That's not the correct way. Similarly, those that public there, looking at the media, what Islam, what they see on media, uh, on Islam, that's what they are going to make. But still, they are very receptive. Maybe that's their history, receptive to new ideas, at, le at least listening to them, exchanging them, and also they accept as well, uh, whoever, uh, whoever wants. So I think it's a two-way thing happening. People here living in other countries, the public is not fully aware. They are looking at the government and the activities of America and making view of them. People living, the public live in America, they are looking at the TV, what's happening, how this Islam is being presented, and that's their view. So there is partial view, it's not a complete view. But generally, I am saying that the, the people, mashallah, they are good, receptive, and uh, also uh, to Islam. Like, for example, like now you see me, many people told me when I went before, don't go there. They are very harsh on religious people, as such. I, uh, or we don't wear the imama uh, sharif, or don't actually have a beard, uh, cut it down, or do something, or don't wear, go in this clothing. I said, this is fraud. This is actually, uh, you may say, uh, fraud and hypocrisy. When they say that we, if someone, whatever they do, we should not let other people change your way of life. Whatever you believe your way of life, someone is good or bad or whatever they are doing, activities, violent activities, government is doing terrorism or organization are doing terrorism or individual are terrorizing, whatever. But the main thing is that we should not let our way of life be affected um, by that. So we said, you know, we are going like this, whatever it is, it is uh, as such. So alhamdulillah, not on there were no difficulties at all. And uh, uh, we went, and similarly, as I said, the public is even uh, more receptive. They don't know, many of them don't, have not heard about Islam, or they don't know at all. But they want to listen. And um, many of them do become uh, uh, Muslims as well. There was, um, uh, when I was there, something happened that one robber, or you may say thief, he went to a petrol station, petrol station to rob, actually, and he threatened the agent or the cashier who was there. He was a Muslim, I think, from Asia. He threatened him that give me money or etc. The shopkeeper, the, the petrol cashier, he got out a gun for his protection or whatever. He got a gun for him and actually said, um, I, now the robber actually, we didn't have a weapon or he became subdued somehow, became fearful. He said, well, I don't intend to uh, rob you or anything, okay? but the thing is that I haven't eaten for so many days or my family is in trouble and I don't, I just came for, that I want something to eat, that was the, so he made his justification. The shopkeeper, the cashier, he gave him some food free, he said you can take the food free, and then some breads, etc., and gave him $40 more actually, he said, if that is the case, then you go for you know, uh, nothing against you, you come for, although you are doing wrong thing, this is not the way to do if you can't find food, but this is, this is but he meaning became more compassionate and uh, or merciful in a way, giving $40. And that person became Muslim just because of that. So he took the Shahada there and then, he said, this is the, yeah, uh, the Muslim behavior. So I actually, I also want to become Muslim and help myself and people and family, other, this behavior I like as well. So this is like a normal American person, he, or a robber, you may say, came, came with the wrong reasons uh, to rob. So this is like, um, people say the stories by 
a thief came and he became Qutb or something, Chor Aya Qutb ban gaya. This is even bigger than that a kafir becomes and becomes a Muslim, he is accepting. A kafir and a robber and a thief and he then accept Islam. That is even bigger thing than the difference between how much a difference between a good Muslim and a Qutb is or a Chor or a thief and a Qutb is the more differences between a disbeliever and a Muslim. So this is the, the type of character of some people and others they have different ones, they have their own variety uh, there. Exactly. Yeah. Just uh, uh, going on from that, you mentioned about this brother, this person, this Muslim. So in general, mm -hmm. how did you find the state of the Muslims uh, and how are they coping with the difficulties uh, and especially new Muslims? What kind of provisions are there for them? Uh, any, any things for them if they want to come into the fold of Islam like this mm -hmm. brother? Is there any centers or help for them? Mm. Unfortunately, in many cases here in Europe as well, when people convert to Islam and they become Muslim, people are happy, they will go in the mosque and you know, uh, uh, shout slogans and takbir and risala and they send that very happy. But in my opinion, there are not even sufficient provisions to make or good Muslims or to Muslims for their tarbiyah, let aside non-Muslim. After that, these people are left on their own. No one asks them, except that in few cases, there are certain organizations which are nominal, which are minimal only. So no one looks after them, they're eating or drinking or what their families, the trouble they will be going through, the support they need, the also other, for example, they want to marry now, will someone accept them, uh, as the proposal from them? They have all needs. Family disputes, they will have a contradiction, a conflict with their own family things. So what happens is that after few months or years, sometime they revert back because they don't have any foundation. And let aside non-Muslim, I'm saying for Muslims, they are in it not sufficient provisions, mosques, are just actually there for reading five prayer, giving khutbah, but for tarbiyah, for training, for youth, for others. Uh, there are efforts, but actually not sufficient. So for non-Muslims uh, who convert to Islam, especially there is not much, only very few organizations on a very small scale uh, also doing that. But some people in some organizations, some individuals, they have taken initiative they are doing. And similarly, it is the case in America as well. And there are many, many people who become Muslim, alhamdulillah, from the Native Americans or actually people living African Americans and others. And there, alhamdulillah, in New York especially, where we had a program as well uh, called uh, Mecca Center. Uh, one Muslim lady, one uh, Muslim, he was a Muslim, he was a Jewish person and he became Muslim. And he invested in a, a big investment in this center which provides and uh, serves the people who are new Muslims with the basic teaching. They are the rules of the Quran, the rules of fiqh and aqidah and everything. And, and they invite scholars from Syria, Yemen, here and there, other Europe, other, uh, from other areas in America. And they do, mashallah, they study aqidah of Ahl Sunnah, the text of aqidah, the text of fiqh, the text of Hanafi fiqh, the text of uh, tazkiyah. And alhamdulillah, I think they have some more knowledge than many, many born Muslims. Uh, they have these uh, people who do. Uh, you can, and also they're supported then they, in individual ways, uh, financially, otherwise, socially. And in their own way, you can just imagine that I went to two places. Uh, one place I went, they had the, this, that they want, to, especially this uh, new Muslim place, <coughs> the discourse, or you may say, explanation about Islam, about teachings of Islam, about tazkiyah. They said that we have a program from one till seven for six hours. So I said to them that they, 
sure because actually people become bored, people don't actually then uh, pay attention or they go after one or two hours like how here in our uh, country here, UK what happens after one hour you see people <coughs> scratching here, they are listening here, they are fe feeling uh, sleepy or um, they don't have intention even to listen to that. So if it is, it is said that six hours a lecture it is for you. They say no, no, we, they want that, they are used to that and they want, they will stay. And really, when I did actually go there, and yes, from half past one till seven, one o'clock till seven o'clock, I finished uh, that the lecture and the discourse was six hour delivery by the Fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, it happened. And in another place, we went to Atlanta, uh, Atlantic City, there were African uh, brothers, some new Muslims and some others. They wanted eight hours, uh, you may say, eight hour discourse, continuous eight hour only. They said we'll have the breaks in the prayer, otherwise we will continue. And they did that, and that was almost, yes, yes, that is right, uh, almost eight hours. And, and this was five hours. And in Muslim uh, mosques, for example, the mosques which are native Muslims and born Muslims and things, that interest is not there. So you can imagine from this and estimate that how much love they have for Islam and how much they have learned to dead and, and how much they are dedicated to learn about Islam and uh, then <coughs> practice Islam. And really the best Muslims were the convert Muslims. Sometimes we think oppositely, sometimes born Muslim think they still look with the second, uh, you may say, class Muslims, or this, this is a convert, this is a revert, or whatever you may say. Now that is a very, very wrong for many reasons, but just one thing I will say, a message to those people who look down upon these people, that they should know that these people, the best Muslims ever in Islam were converts. They were never, the born Muslims were not the best one. The best one are the converts, actually, and that is true. How you will say? Because they resemble more like Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Sayyidina Umar al-Farooq, Sayyidina Usman al-Ghani, and many, many, many of the Sahaba. They were converts. They were not born Muslim. So they resemble them more. So born Muslim do not can identify with Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, or the meaning who is the best Muslim in the whole of the Ummah, or Sayyidina Umar al-Farooq, or Sayyidina Usman al-Ghani, Oh, Sayyidina Talha, Sayyidina Zubair, or oh, Abdul Rahman bin Auf, Sayyidina Abu Huraira, or oh, and many, many others, uh, well, who are from Ashra, Mubashar, the ten uh, more who have glad tidings of uh, Jannah in this uh, dunya. And so they are the best Muslims. So similarly, a convert are the, can be, and are the best Muslim, they can identify more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards them more. And alhamdulillah, now the Muslims need to convert as well into practicing uh, Muslim, who are born Muslim. They are in more, uh, you may say, bad state than them. Anyway. Exactly. Um, you mentioned about meeting converts and other people, but was it like um, when often groups and camps go for dawah, they usually meet their own community, like the Pakistani community? Was it just the Pakistani community that you met, or was it other communities and other people from different uh, 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 parts of the world? As I said, the yes, you are right in the sense I also mentioned to you, to uh, point out that this, that when one scholar or one da'i goes, he goes and visits his own like Pakistani community, the Indian world will go Indian community and come back, one to us. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we had the opportunity and we tried not to limit it. So we went and addressed in, uh, to non-Muslims in university, like having their classes in universities uh, or lecture in universities. Non-Muslims, that aside, you know. then also African Muslims uh, from who are Af from Af African Americans, uh, they are Muslim. Then also Pakistani community, then the Indian community. Also, we went to the, an invitation from Bosnian community. Uh, so they were completely different community. They have their own mosque. Uh, we went, so Bosnian, American, the, the new Muslim, 
Chinese, Americans, uh, others. So a variety of actually spectrum, you may say, uh, groups. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we had the opportunity to interact and pass the uh, message of Prophet Wasallam and message of salvation uh, and goodness for all humanity and jinnat. And uh, so, so this was a quite a big variety, not only Muslim from Asia, Pakistan, or no, no, there was a Bengali community, there was the Asian community, uh, meaning Pakistani, Bosnian, the American, new Muslim, the African, uh, and others as well. Sure. Yes. You mentioned uh, some universities, like we have here, Oxford University, there's Yale University, Sacred Heart University. What message uh, did you convey there, and what was the response, and generally what kind of questions or feedback did you get from the Muslims and non-Muslims who were attending the lectures there? The message wherever I go from children to adults, Muslim and non-Muslim is same, uh, almost same. Message of salvation, how the summary of the message is how one can have sound and better and good relationship with the creator and the creation. The, the other part is how to achieve that. But the message ultimately is obviously to achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have good relationship with the creator and how to have the sound and better relationship with the creation of Allah. Because if these two things are achieved, a person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes pleased with that person by his fadl. The rest is how to achieve it. Then we show them the way, the, uh, the prophetic way. That's why Tariqah Muhammadiyah is the prophetic way how to become that person that you will have better, uh, you will be at peace with your creator and peace with yourself and also the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa sawajal. And he is the best person as the Prophet said, khayrun nas mayyan fa'un nas. The best amongst human beings is the one who is most beneficial for them. And when these two points are brought together, this is the summary of whole of Islam. Uh, and the oh, summary of the tasawwuf, summary of the tazkiyah, summary of the fruits of spirituality and fruits uh, of Islam. So this message and question, they have, uh, as they listen to many, many discourses, many, many channels, Islam is demonized by many, as I said, media, does, it, it does happen. They have their own uh, views and things. But, uh, for example, one question was discussed there, that is Muslim allowed to marry four wives, have relationship with four person, four wives at one time. Uh, I said that uh, really I should be asking this question to you, not that yourself should be asking me. They said, why? I said, because you say that you can have unlimited relationship with women, unlimited relationship with women. There's no limit of four, there's no limit of four thousand. And that relationship based upon dishonesty, one person defrauding the other, not telling the one woman that I am having a relationship with the other, not giving them legal rights, not giving them honor and uh, or legalizing the matters. And Islam has put these restrictions that they should be legal, you should be honest, other all other wives not disturb Okay, inshallah we'll continue after that. Alhamdulillah, it's not a technical difficulty. Yes, Alhamdulillah, we have come for a short commercial break. So please stay with us and we'll see you shortly. Tujh se hai ye dua Malik e khush ko tar Taal de har bala Tu ki hai chara ghar
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome back, my dear viewers. If you just joined us, Alhamdulillah, we've been discussing about the recent trip, the tour, uh, our teacher, Sheikh Ahmed Daba, who have just currently ret returned. And we were just uh, about to finish the question about, uh, I asked the question about the, the questions people usually ask uh, in America. And one of the questions was regarding why uh, Muslim men are allowed to have four wives. So they were just replying to that. Alhamdulillah, so they will finish that answer, then inshallah we will go to the next question. Salaam alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Yes, uh, so during the lecture this question was uh, discussed. And normally our people, you see, they are uh, become defensive and also because they, firstly they don't have knowledge and secondly they somehow they are victim of inferiority, no, 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 it is four wives are not allowed, it is one only, this is only for war time and things like this. I said, you know, they have one, they, however the command of Allah is, that's how it is, one should uh, explain it well. So they asked about why Islam allows relationship uh, with four women, that's the question, four wives are for relationship, because in, in their eyes, marriage doesn't mean anything, it is a relationship, like actually, man with the women. So I said that uh, I should be asking this question to you, but I didn't because I thought mm, this is quite obvious uh, you were doing it and it is not right in our opinion. But And said what? That you are, it, in, uh, according to your standards, you can have a relationship with 1,000 women. You can have 1,000 wives as though in your court terms, how you see the relationship. Or if uh, there is not even limit of 1,000, unlimited and then you are also not uh, sometime even mentioning to one of the you have one it is based on fraud it is based on dishonesty and also you don't give them any legal rights uh, there any property and, or honor or in public it's like a secret type of thing and Islam have, doesn't give you unlimited firstly it puts condition that if you cannot do adil and justice it's only one. And secondly, it puts limit on four. Thirdly, it said honor them. Fourthly, it says mention to all of them that what you are doing and their rights should be fulfilled. They should and give them legal rights, give them financial support and in public. So is this more person should be asking a question or the person who has unlimited relationships or they believe? I said you are aware how many a person have how many girlfriends and boyfriends people have here, there every week, they are changing two weeks, they have affairs are going here and there. So, and they didn't have anything to say. After that, how can they when there is, they are having unlimited provision and <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put four at least and then in an honorable way. So, is a question, but I do not normally get into these questions like a comparative religion because they don't really help in the sense, but the people become Muslim with, uh, through conduct and behavior. Although our Mashaikh has given what these people debate about, but mostly people are debating, millions times better answer our Mashaikh have, and they can uh, give them, and, uh, and there's no uh, answer to them, their uh, answer further more. But because still, you are just addressing the mind of people. We are supposed to address the hearts of people, not the mind. And hearts do not become convinced with intellectual and logical and logic and intellect. And hearts become inclined with love and conduct and behavior and welfare. Right recently, someone mentioned to me, I said, myself heard that this person who became Muslim just because he gave, he came to rob. He's already rubbing because he's hungry, so he gave him food and $40, this became. Now once thousand scholars gave him thousand lectures, he will not become Muslim. Convince him Islam is this, Islam is this, Islam is this. So another person 
who became Muslim, uh, or you may say not Muslim, but in the sense uh, story, that someone went non-Muslim, a couple, a Christian couple, or atheist couple, or whichever, but they were not Muslim, visiting Turkey. And they obviously go for holidays for their own, have good time, walk, talk, drink, eat. And they lost the way to their hotel. They ended up in a village, asked a village person, we don't know where a hotel is. He said, show us. He said, you can live with me. So they, he took them at home. He had a wife. He had a, one a mother, one actually aunt, or elderly, some children living there. So they said, OK, it's comfortable. We will live here. So they gave him, uh, he gave them the provision, the food, etc., and the room to rest. And uh, when he gave the room to rest, the, the person said, uh, uh, that we have a sufficient other place, you rest there. And they said, we got up and we saw in the morning that they didn't have another room. They were all resting under the tree, shivering with cold, having blankets and other things on, children, the elderly woman, his mother. And they said, felt so unwell and so discomforted. Heart. What you did this is why you did this. He said, because I'm a Muslim, and uh, I'm not scholar of knowledge, but uh, we heard that our Prophet said that help or honor the guest. And I'm resting. And that couple became Muslim. So people become Muslim and change their behavior because of behavior and conduct, not with arguing and debating and wars or actually, uh, you may say, intellectual, just intellectual exercises and debates. MashaAllah, Jazakallah, Hair. MashaAllah, such beautiful words. Alhamdulillah, with Allah's fuzzle and karam, this is, we have come to the end of the program. There are many questions and things to ask, but we never have uh, enough time. But if you would like to join the teacher in one of their gatherings, we have weekly gatherings on Mondays, on Thursdays, on, on Juma. There's many gatherings that take place. For our itinerary, if you look on the bottom of the screen, the www.zavia.org, the programs and the dates for when you can attend their weekly programs and uh, listen firsthand the advice and the Nasiya in uh, more than an hour, Alhamdulillah, you're more than welcome to. And many of the centers have facilities for sisters also, and they can participate. So Alhamdulillah, uh, on that point, I would like to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us and I would like to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for bringing back our teacher and the brothers safely back from America and may they continue with the da'wah throughout the world, inshallah, till the last breath and all, we all die in that state. So on that point, Alhamdulillah, and the DM Digital team for working hard behind the team, I'd like to thank them also. So on behalf of myself and on behalf of the Muhammadiyya channel, the channel which is leading us all to the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.